All right, what's up everyone? Lucas here at the Lift Factory in Vegas. I'm gonna knock out a shoulder workout for you and, and try to explain exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Uh, if you haven't looked at my YouTube before, go and subscribe to it. I got, you know, like over 100 exercise videos, just demonstrations on how to do ex exercises and a couple other full workout videos. So go and check them out if you're not already. And also a few housekeeping things here I'll knock out in the beginning is if you're watching this video and not following me on my other social media platforms, Instagram, go and follow uh, Duncan Lucas. It'll be in the, in the notes and I'll also put a little graphic here, Duncan Lucas and LBD Workouts. Go and follow those two pages if you're just finding me here on YouTube. And I believe that's everything. I'm not gonna, we're training later today. It's about 6.30 p.m. So I'm not gonna take a pre-workout. You know, one of my rules, well, let me address a, a few things here real quick too. One of my rules that I follow is I don't like uh, to do stimulants, any form of stimulants after 12 p.m. simply because it's gonna keep me up and uh, you know I won't be able to sleep. So at 6:30, I'm not gonna take a pre-workout, but I'll show you during my workout what I do drink to help me, you know, power through the workout. Um, another house, another quick thing, real uh, thing, real quick, is before I came here, I had two scoops of whey protein and two slices of Ezekiel bread. You know, one of the questions I get a lot is, oh, can I train? fasted, you know, fasted, can I train without, uh, can I train on an empty stomach? And I always say, when well, you're talking about weight training, no, you wanna have a meal before you weight train. You know, something quick like a protein shake and a quick carb source, uh, like Ezekiel bread, uh, you know, fruit is okay too. But you always wanna eat something before you weight train. Now, if you're just doing cardio, you can do cardio fasted in the morning, but never weight train on an empty stomach. So I had a quick meal like 45 minutes ago, and now I'm gonna be ready to destroy this workout. So without further ado, let's go knock out shoulders. And like I said, I'm gonna do my best to explain everything, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Let's go. Okay, so we're starting a short, I started my shoulder workout with dumbbell raises, dumbbell lateral raises. And I start with side raises just to, basically a warm up. So a lot of people will start with just shoulder press, but you, you wanna make sure you're your shoulder capsule and your joints are warm before you get into your heavy pressing movement. And I always like to start with side raises just to work that width. I've never seen you know anybody who's too wide. So a big thing here is uh, if you look at my form, I'm keeping my wrist below my elbows as I raise the weight. And you also notice I'm not going you know super high up. A lot of people get confused on this. You don't want to work any of your traps when you go up. So you're not going all the way up. You're trying to isolate the side head of your deltoid. And then with your hands, you're just imagining, imagine you're scraping your knuckles across the ground. You're just, you're raising your, your arm a little bit. You're not really trying to move the dumbbell, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're starting with, I'm starting with side, side raises to work your side delt. Uh, now let me explain here real quick. A lot of people will just do shoulders. They'll just start with the presses, which is fine, but I like to start with side, ra side, side raises because that giving, working your side delt is gonna give you that illusion of more width. And also, if you start with presses, it's kind of bad with your elbows because you're not warm, you don't have blood in there. So you're, you're starting you know, with a heavy compound movement cold. So I kind of like to warm up the whole shoulder capsule by doing side raises. And this last set, I'm gonna do a drop set. It's actually be a, gonna be a double drop set uh, so I'm gonna do this set and I'll, then I'll explain exactly what I did. Okay, so the range of motion is gonna be uh, very short, shorter or smaller than you think here. And my last set on the side raises is a double drop set. So a double drop set is I'm gonna, you know, you do your, your, your heaviest set. And I think I did like 10 to 12 reps here. And also another thing is on side raises, when you fatigue, you never want to, a little body swing is okay, but when you fatigue, instead of you know moving your whole body to hoist the weight up, you just want to cut your range down. And you'll notice that big time here in these last couple of sets. So a double drop set, I do my first set, and this is performed in the last set of the exercise. I do my heaviest set, and then I lower the weight. I think I lowered it like 10 pounds. And I'm gonna do more reps here. I think I do like eight to 10 reps. So you basically lower the weight and go to failure. And if you stopped right there after that, it would be called just a drop set. But I'm gonna do this set and I'm gonna lower the weight again and do another set that's a double drop set. And as you can see here, there's no rest in between these sets, just one long set. 
And here as I get uh, on this last set, you'll really see me, my shoulders are fried. So you'll really see where I implement, excuse me, where I implement partial reps or half reps or whatever you want to call them. But the idea behind them is to just keep pumping blood to the muscle instead of hoisting your, your body to move the weight. That's, that's a really big key that a lot of people you know, don't understand for. You'll really notice it here in these last couple of reps. Short reps will really help do that after you're already fatigued. Double drop set. So my second exercise is seated dumbbell shoulder press. I think I did like four sets here. And with, with every exercise, you're gonna start, your first set's gonna be lighter, and then the next set go a little heavier, the next set go a little heavier. My reps stay, really stay the same between eight to 12. And if you don't have a workout partner, these are kind of a little harder to perform if you don't have a spot, uh, but you can still do it. You can also do shorter press on the Smith machine or a pin loaded machine or a plate loaded machine in your gym. Uh, so you'll notice here I'm going down to my ears and I'm going only at three quarters of the way up. I'm doing that on purpose. You don't want to lock out because you don't want any stress on that elbow. So it's all, think of it as a fluid movement. Down to your ears and then three quarters of the way up. Okay, for presses, uh, you'll notice when I'm pressing up, I'm not locking out my elbows. So, you know, I'll see a lot of people, they go like this. So they're either not going far enough down and they're going too high up. So you, you wanna go just like your ear level and then you press up you're going about three quarters up, and that's just to keep all the stress on your front delt and off your elbow. So it's never like this, or it's never like this, just like this right here. So something a lot of people uh, get confused or is misunderstanding is they say, oh, well, you're not doing full range of motion. And although that may be true in the sense of the word, you are doing full range of motion for the, for the front delt, because once you go past a certain point, you're not working your front delt, you're working your triceps and your elbow. So full range of motion for the front delt in a shoulder press is a short range of motion. That's something that a lot of people have trouble wrapping their heads around. So you're doing full range of motion for the muscle, but maybe not necessarily full range of motion in you know, the sense of the word, but for the muscle you're working, it is full range. So always keep that in mind. And also another thing too, is when you're doing a pressing movement, a lot of this is a mistake that a lot of beginners do is they'll like look to the side or look up or look down you just want to look forward keep your head straight your eyes forward you know you never want to look to your side when you're performing any movement but especially a pressing movement like that like this you want to you know protect your neck so that was my last set on dumbbell shoulder press and then i'm going to go into rear cable flies uh this can this is also you know you can, you can also do reverse pec deck or bent over dumbbell raises it's going to work your rear delts uh, so big keys on this one is you'll notice I'm not going really far back. You'll see a lot of people when they do like a, a reverse pec deck, they'll go like all the way back. And you know, that's only gonna work your mid back and traps. So you're trying to isolate your rear delts here. So remember it's all about isolation whenever you're trying to, you know, build muscle and build a physique. So you'll notice I'm only going far enough back where I can feel my rear delts. So if, you're, if you go back and you start feeling your traps or mid back, and that means you've gone too far. So a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, that's, that's not full range of motion. And I'll argue it is full range of motion for that given muscle. So for the rear delt, that's the full range that the rear delt's gonna go. If you go any further, you're not working the rear delt anymore. So that's the idea behind uh, my motion, my range of motion I'm doing here. And then, like I said, I, today I just chose to do the cable just because that's what I felt like doing. But you can also work your rear delts like this on the on the pec deck, reverse pec deck when you face the pad, or just old school bent over dumbbell raises. Um, so those three those three movements of rear delts I like to rotate from week to week. Okay, we're about uh, we did three exercises, so we're about halfway through my workout, and now is usually when you know I'll sip on my BCAs, the branched chain amino acids. So what branched chain amino acids do is they help you stay anabolic throughout your workout because while you're working out you're actually breaking down muscle so you still want to feed that muscle with aminos and they're basically going to improve your recovery and help your endurance throughout your workout uh, the ones that i'm taking also have glutamine 
and a joint support formula. So like I said, I just do one scoop during my workout. Now usually I'll start it like before my workout, but today I'm just to do midway through. And then I'll just sip on it like in between sets. And like I said, it's gonna help your recovery. You know, because while you're training, while you're working out, you're actually breaking down muscle tissue. So you wanna protect that muscle tissue while you're working out to speed up your recovery, to help you work out, help your overall progress in the gym. So you wanna take advantage of everything you have at your arsenal. And uh, now a lot of people say, oh, do I have to take it? No, you don't have to take supplements. I mean, you don't have to do anything. But if you really wanna optimize your progress, yeah, there are a few supplements I recommend. And branch amino acids is definitely one of them. And then I'm gonna go into a superset here for shoulders. I'm doing a wide grip, upright rows, and I superset with plate front raises. So wide grip is gonna work your side head of the delts. You know, a lot of people, when they first start weight training, they'll just do a close grip, upright row, which I've never really been a big believer in. I've never really done that much either, simply because it's gonna be hard on your, your rotator cuff and joints. It's not really, I never really felt felt it in my shoulders and already the closer grip. I Once I started implementing the wide grip, I got that from Charles Glass out of Venice, California. Wide grip upright rows really isolates the side head of the delt and no stress whatsoever on your joints. Okay, so if you've been, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that this is, I've posted this superset probably like three or four times. It's one of my favorite supersets for shoulders. So I'm doing wide grip, uh, upright row. So having a wider grip is gonna work that side delt. Wide grip up right row, and you're supersetting that with plate front raises, which is obviously gonna work your front delts. Now you can also do like dumbbell front raises or a cable, use a rope or a straight bar. But I like doing the plate, because you're gonna put your hands at uh, a neutral grip, I guess you'd call it, neutral grip. So that's really gonna isolate that front delt by having your hands like this. So I just love the superset because it engorges your whole shoulder with blood. A side delt and the front delt. And I've posted it probably like a ton of times on my Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it. If not, try it out. It's one, by far one of my favorite supersets for shoulders. And I do it like, uh, you know, towards the end. At least our fourth exercise. So I do it towards the end once I'm already fatigued. But definitely try this one out, it's great. Okay, so a couple of things here you'll notice with the form is I'm pulling the bar. I'm trying to keep the bar close to my body as I pull it up. And then I'm only going to my chest because I'm not really trying to work my traps. Remember, it's all about isolation. So I'm trying to isolate my side, side delts. So keeping your, the bar close to your body as you pull up and keep your torso up, your chest up, and then pull to your chest. This is wide grip, upright rows. And then with the front raises, the plate front raises, the keys here are you're going to eye level, and then you, you want to go down, but you don't really want to try not to touch your thighs. It's hard, but you don't want to touch your thighs because you don't want any moment of rest. So you want to stop just before your thighs and go to your eye level. Now, a lot of people, I posted this on Instagram, and somebody was like, oh, Arnold went all the way up. If he can do it, I, yeah, he can go all the way up then. I mean, it doesn't, it's not going to make it, it doesn't make the movement any better if you go any higher than eye level. Can you go all the way up? Yeah, sure, but it's not going to work your front delt anymore. So that's why I'm doing it this way, and this is, this is, I love this superset, try it out. It really, you know, pumps up your delts. So here I'm doing another movement for your side delts. This is, uh, this is like an old school machine, and then I think somebody like redid it, remade it. You don't see this machine at a lot of gyms. Um, I think Lift Factory like just got this recently too, so I had to try it out. And uh, this is just another version of a lateral raise. So we're getting towards the end of the workout. I'm gonna hit side delts again, simply because you know the side delts, working side delts is gonna give you that illusion of width. So if you're trying to be you know, a bodybuilder trying to gain muscle, it, it's hard to have too much width. And this is a really, really good machine. It's like, I would just call this a pin-loaded lateral raise machine. You don't always see it in a lot of gyms. Uh, it's super nice. You can do side raises, or you can also go like this and do front raise. So it's a super nice machine. I've only seen this machine in a couple other gyms. 
So for the side head, you really can't really do too much work. Like you'll notice I did, I did dumbbell for side head, I did wide grip, and I'm doing this. And that's just because you really want to give the illusion of more width, more size. You want to give the work your side head more to get a cap out your shoulder. Okay, so I finish up with shrugs, dumbbell shrugs. And this one is, I do these different than most people. So notice my elbows are coming back and they're bent. You're not just shrugging straight up. So what is that doing? That's, that's working your traps from the back. So your traps are you know, technically part of your back. So that's the reason why, it's almost like a row kind of. Okay, so I'm finishing with shrugs for traps. Um, funny, funny story. When I first started working out, right when I was 16, I did trap shrugs like every other day. Cause you know, when you first see somebody, if they have big traps and they're gonna look big. <laughs> so I did traps like every other day cause I wanted to big traps. But, you know, that was when I first started like 13 years ago. And uh, now, honestly, I really don't even tra train traps. I'm doing them now just with the video to, to show you, you know, the best way to train your traps and get big traps. Most people do shrugs. Uh, not the best way. So really watch how I'm doing them. I'm slightly bending my elbows instead of keeping my arms straight. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna hit your traps in the back. Because technically your traps are part of your back. It's a back muscle. So instead of just going straight like this, watch my elbows. You're, you're almost like rowing the weight back kinda. It's a, it takes some trial and error to get, to, to get the right angle. But uh, the key is you just slightly wanna bend your elbows and shrug back, not just straight up. So really look at my elbow, look at my elbows when I'm performing this movement. And then the biggest mistakes that I see on this one is most people use way too much weight. Like I'm only using, I think like 80 pounds. And you know, my traps aren't really small, so. So you don't really need to use a ton of weight. It's more about feeling the muscle and getting that right form down. So look at my elbows, look how bent they are. Now a lot of people might say, oh, you get a tear a bicep. You're not gonna tear a bicep if you're doing it right. Think about your traps. And just, and just shrugging up and back. And you can also do these like in a Smith machine too. I love them doing, love doing them in a Smith machine. Uh, but use lighter weight than you think. Okay, so that was my shoulder workout. You know, I hit all three heads, front, side, and rear, and also did, you know, my pressing movement too. Pretty quick, I mean, I bust that out in like 45, 50 minutes. The shoulders, you know, shoulders like arms are smaller muscles, so you don't need, to be in the gym for an hour, 90 minutes, two hours, 45 to 60 minutes, as long as you're moving fast. As you can see, I'm sweating and out of breath. So <laughs> keep your rest period shorter and just knock it out real quick. You know, shoulders is one of those muscles you really want to chase the pump, not necessarily try to move a bunch of weight. So really try to pump up your shoulders, drive as much blood into the muscle as possible. Now post-workout, I'm gonna do my post-workout drink, which is Pure Rebuild. Creatine, glutamine, and aminos. Yes, ladies can take this too. If your goal is to gain muscle, anybody can take it. So I just do one scoop post-workout. Should help the recovery process, help strength, size. Uh, if your goal is to gain lean muscle, check out Pure Rebuild. And like I said before, if you're just watching or just finding me on YouTube, make sure you're following me on my Instagram. I got two main pages. Duncan Lucas is my main page, and LBD Workouts is my video-only page where I got you know tons of exercise videos on there. And if you're not subscribed to this YouTube, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the workout, try it out. Let me know how you like it. Thanks.